Starting a new project here today. This is Dan from dozerwinchsparks.com. This is a Cat 58 winch removed off of a 583 or a D8K type dozer. Um, these winches are a lot different than either a Heister or a Carco. The main difference is normally right here, uh, you see there's the PTO input, and normally just on the inside here, you'll have uh, an input clutch that's uh, turning the power on and off, and then down there there's the uh, line in line out clutch, and then the other line in line out over there, you can just see the double gears for each side. Uh, when the winch is in neutral, both of those combine to make the brake. So it's a totally different design. Rather than having a, a brake to one side and then a forward and reverse clutch, they'll put the forward and reverse locked up is the brake, and then they'll use the input clutch to bring power to the drum. So it's a very different design, remote pumps. Uh, I'll try and give you the crash course here. Um, the weak point of these winches is the input clutch. It's normally in that empty area. We'll go over that later. Um, yeah. Okay, here's that Cat 58 winch again. Um, over here, there's a, a W12D that was started but not finished yet. And it's some pack, old Packard winches. But anyway, um, Cat 58. Again, we talked about how the input clutch is there. There's where the PTO goes in, and there's an input clutch right here. And then we saw the forward and reverse clutches were lower. Here is the input clutch housing, right right there, that guy, right there. Um, that's where all the energy from the tractor PTO, the entire horsepower that goes through the PTO goes through that, that input clutch. Um, when it's not engaged, no power goes to the drum, no power goes to the winch, and then when you want power, the valve engages that input clutch, locks it up, and then the winch either engages the forward or reverse clutch pack. Um, when the winch is in neutral, these clutches are both locked up and that becomes your brake. So those together locked up becomes your brake. It's unique on the cat design. This is a design only used in cat. Uh, huge holding power on the brake. There's seven frictions in each clutch. So 14 frictions are holding your, holding your drum but when you go to line in, there's only four frictions in the input clutch. So uh, the input clutch is the weak link in most cat winches. There are a couple updates, but for the most part, um, if you have trouble with the cat winch, our first place to look is in the input clutch, just because there's fewer fl frictions for how much horsepower goes through it. And if you're inching, if you're feathering and trying to do uh, inching work with it with a PTO winch, one, it's not ideal. But that's what cooks is that input clutch. So um, just wanted to, while it's taken apart, we'll note that. Uh, we'll keep going with this build and let you know what else we find. Right now, uh, the issue is Cat still supplies all of the soft goods. Like here's all the little springs. There's your frictions and separators there. You can still get all those but you can't get any of the hard parts, the, the gears, um, any main shafts. Uh, that This hub down here uh, has a really bad groove in it where the seal rides, the seal of the drum. Uh, Cat wants over 10 grand for that part, and that's the only one that they'll still make of all the hard parts. So um, gotta figure out a better way to fix that guy. Okay, the winch has been out in the cleaning bay. Uh, everything's been stripped, nothing left inside. Pulled the drum. Um, a lot of the hard parts for these winches, um, gears, shafts, all that kind of stuff are no longer available from Cat. So um, most of the stuff we were able to get in terms of soft parts, O-ring seals, but um, we kind of when it comes down to any hard parts broken we end up pulling parts out of the boneyard and making everything else just work so here's a quick snap of pre-assembly and then we'll try and keep you up to date as the build goes along all right continuing the build right now you'll see one of the 
completed brake sides. I'm going to call it a brake, um, even though it's also acting as a line-in clutch. Um, obviously, we said this already. In neutral, it's uh, applied, holding the drum. And then when you go line-in or line-out, one of the brakes will release. And you can see this is, this is part of the assembly here. If we buzz over on here, this is a tub. The bottom of that bin is a bunch of frictions that we've been soaking. And over here, we're putting them together. Um, these brakes, if, if they, the seals, the cat seals are back over there, those little white pieces there, those are super sensitive. If you get nicked them or damaged or something happens, uh, Without those seals, your your clutch or your brake line in, whatever you want to call them, will not function properly. Um, I wanted to just get a video as they're coming together. See the bevel gears there on the bottom, matching bevel gear on the other side, uh, where the input clutch connects to the this main brake slash clutch hub. Um, and this is where all the pulling power comes from. Um, one side or the other. You'll see that there's a lot of frictions and separators. This is only half the brake, so you have a huge holding power when the brake is engaged. Um, one side releases, and that allows the drum to turn. So, Danny, that sound about right? Yeah. If you look over here, <laughs> these cat winches, unfortunately, if you lose too many hard parts, they end up getting scrapped, and there's another one. That's from a smaller cat winch that uh, never got put back together because it was too expensive to fix. But this one, thankfully, most of the hard parts were in decent shape or at least usable shape. So we're putting her back together and uh, customer can go back to work. So. I'd be real careful with these because if I remember right, Danny, they're not going to stretch. You got to be... This stretch just enough to go on. You stretch them farther than that, and then they just throw them away. <clears throat> the cat winches in general uh, are, are more particular, more, uh, any, what's the right word would you say? More finicky. They don't like to be out of alignment. Everything's got to be tooled within a tolerance and put together just right. Um, where some of the other, like a Carco or an Allied, are a little bit more forgiving. Cat winches are not forgiving when you're installing them, either pressure settings or valve settings, shim here, shim there. Um, you got to be extra careful when doing these cat winches. So we find that most of these winches are easier to assemble when they're on their side, so you can get away with it. Uh, like things like the clutch shaft, uh, or this one, the brake shaft, I guess. There, uh, it's easier to drop in from the side. So there's that. That's in, drill gear is going in. And he's got her about set. Nothing's easy with these cat winches. They all like to fight you, but um, making progress. Drum gear has been installed. Tightening up the drum nuts now. There's your powertrain. Drum gear, bowl gear. Uh, in this case, we couldn't get a replacement bowl gear, um, bowl and pinion. So everything that was available used wasn't much better than this. So rather than waste the money, we reuse this one until it goes belly up and then put a used one back in. That's what, when it comes to these cat winches, that's what you gotta do because they're discontinued, no longer available, and it's a matter of just doing what you need to do to keep them running at this point, so. So this is the fun part about rebuilding a cat winch. Shims, shims, and more shims. Shims there, shims in the pile there. Everything gets shimmed. So making progress, but uh, if you're working on one of these, you gotta be real careful that all of the alignment, spacing, 
everything is right because when you get to the end if it's not well it won't work right so Danny's just going slow making sure everything's done right so we don't have a problem at the end at least that's what you hope right so uh, got the bottom stuff in there So let's try not to see if this light helps. If we're looking, see this gear there, that guy? There's the, the input clutch is, goes in through this hole to the left. And that transfers the power to this other gear on the bottom, which transfers the power into the, there's that main uh, two clutch packs with the two brakes. There's one on top, let's see there. There you go. One on top, one on the bottom pinion bevels so 100% of the power is going to go through that very tiny gear into the brakes so it's incredible that you have huge clutch packs or brakes huge power there but it's all going through this little gear reduction little gear as well as on this side just these little four frictions so you're going to pull 80 or 100,000 pounds in that ballpark it's all going through that little four friction clutch pack. So pretty interesting the way Cat's got these set up. They're really leveraging the gear reduction uh, to get pulling power, but it does create a weak point where the input goes in. See there, you'll see it here. There's where the input is, and there's that little gear that transfers power into the, the brake slash clutch shaft. So nearing completion making progress every day okay. another update uh, there is the retainer for the drum shaft going on we've got the input clutch pretty well in but like everything on cat winch it needs to be shimmed there's some more shims that uh we need to get and put in to get it to line up right um but more progress. Okay, end of day. Yeah, I forget which day we're on. Got a few projects going, but anyway. Um, again, cat 58, end of day check-in. There you go, pretty darn close. We're still waiting on a couple of shims for that PTO input. We're stuck until we get those, so. Got her pretty well put together now. Once those shims come in, we'll be able to line everything up right and put this thing on the test bench. Okay, finally got her put back together after waiting on shims and gaskets and everything else. Shimming this PTO shaft ended up being a total bear. There's a ton of shims behind that thing to get it to line up correctly. Um, Got all the gaskets finally. Got... All right, there she is all prepped for paint. Um, it went together at the vast, last little bit was a bear. Shimming the, the PTO shaft there took an enormous amount of shims to get the, the gears to mesh correctly. And every time you test it, you gotta go all the way assemble and see if it fits. And then if it doesn't, you gotta start all over and there's just not a great way to do it, so. Yeah, they're pain at the end, getting all the little gaskets and stuff, but she's done now, all ready to go out. Um, normally everything gets tested and it's we've got a great system for that, but these cat winches, um, the way they work is the valve is sitting, uh, here, here's that valve, there, yes. The valve here, this guy, is this is a two control cable winch so one of the cables goes in this hole and the other cable runs through here and ties into that guy right there so two cables what's unique about a cat winch is those cables work in unison so here's uh, th this is a like a console Let's see if it console right so this is the operator's hand that's operating the winch normally you got a cable in cable out well this thing has a gyro so they're, they're tied together when you move one the push pull cables both move at a different axis so as you're working and operating the lever it's it's taking 
uh, engaging that input clutch and also uh, disengaging the brakes simultaneously. And the way that overlap is, it is in the, in the hand lever. So part of the reason these winches are becoming obsolete and really hard to keep going is this part here, this, that part in there is no longer available a lot of times. So once that, once that is gone or sloppy or loose, the winch won't operate right. Um, that's like if you had like a D7 or D8, something like that, you'll have a something like that in the operator's right hand. And uh, without having everything, so you have to have this, this fork pattern because that's tied into how those gimbals work, you know, how this is floating in space. And that's adjusting how the valve is turning on the input clutch and and releasing the brake and vice you know drum in drum out all that is all controlled very very particularly so we'll get this guy all painted up and prep for shipment but that's part of the reason these winches are becoming obsolete along with all the hard parts like uh there's some gears in here that are obsolete i mean this shaft there's a shaft inside there for the input there's a few of those cap models that just is no more. And once our used stock is gone, there is no more. Oh, thanks, Jason. All right. So here's, here's one of the ones. That's, that's your input shaft that the uh, input clutch rides on. And some of these are no longer available from cat. And once they're gone and our used stock is gone, these winches become boat anchors. Um, so... Avoid boat anchors. These winches are great when they're running, but as of, you know, it's 2020 this year, just rolled over and there's only so much life we can get out of these before it's just not possible to fix. So anyway, let us know if you have any other questions. We'll walk you through them as best we can. The great news is you can still get the soft parts, seals and O-rings and stuff, but um, when they go, they go. There she is finally done so a couple of things to note um when you're installing it you want to make sure to get all of this paint off the back buff that all real smooth so it's metal to metal uh no no uh nothing to get loose you don't want one of these winches flying off the back of a cat when you're pulling eighty thousand pounds um but all cleaned up, all looking good, and the key is, sorry for my bad camera work, the key is that now it works.